Do you have people coming over for the holidays or are you just sick and tired of having a house that's cluttered? A house that when you come home, you don't feel relaxed in. Well, sometimes you don't realize what it is that looks cluttered or how to change it. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about seven reasons your house looks cluttered and what to do instead. Number one are open shelves that aren't organized. The new trend is to have everything open and airy, whether that's where you put your towels, your linens, or just open kitchen shelves. Have you seen those? Where there's shelves and there's plates and there's cups? Well, unless you're going to be on top of those, they may look pretty when they're all styled and decorated on the home shopping channels, but when they're actually in your home, keeping them organized is tough but keeping them organized is really the only way to keep them from looking cluttered. In our home, we do not have a linen closet. It is one of the things that I wish we did have, but we don't. So somehow in this floor plan, the builder built this open shelving that's above the bathtub, and that is where we put our bath towels. Well, you know, as much as I try to show my husband how I want them organized, to put them up there, how easy it would be, they don't always end up looking like that. So I have to go back in and reorganize them, take them back down, put them in by color, make them look nice and neat. But you can see that it's a huge difference from the beginning when my husband just shoves them in there to get them out of his hair, or I go back in and spend three to four minutes just doing a little bit of tidying to make them look nicer. Number two, you don't have a drop zone for when you come home. We come home with stuff, let's just be honest. Stuff comes in, it just kind of sticks to us like a lint roller or like toilet paper in your shoe when you're coming out of a bathroom stall. Not you. Having a drop zone is very important. We have one as well. And we also have one that is housing enclosure. So that if somebody comes over really quickly and I haven't put my things away, I can just shove them right back in that and nobody would be the wiser. This is also where we keep all kinds of miscellaneous cords. Um, I really need to go through this for sure. But having a drop zone is the place where you're gonna put the mail that you brought in. You're gonna put your kids, you know, artwork from school that day, the permission slip that you need to find, the whatever, fill in the blank. Everything that you need to drop. But the one thing about this is you need to ensure that it's small. Don't have a huge drop zone. Having a huge drop zone is just going to allow you to have more crap to leave on it and to not feel that you need to remove it. At the end of the day, you need to make sure that you clear off the drop zone. Don't let this go more than 24 to 48 hours without it being cleared off. So while you have a small drop zone and that is the place that you put things, you need to set aside a certain amount of time each day to make sure you have put away the things or identified where they need to go or handled the item. If it's a bill, permission slip, etc., Get it over and complete and off of the drop zone. Number three is you have too much decor. Yes, decor these days is so inexpensive when you go to Home Goods or TJ Maxx or Marshalls, and oh my goodness, this is just so cute, I have to buy it. They have some of the best stuff, even just organizing shelving units or um, organizing baskets. All of that stuff adds up and people end up over decorating. You know, they put all the signs up, the welcome, bless this home, live, love, laugh, etc. The welcome signs by the front door. Then they put all the flowers and the knickknacks and the picture frames and the things that their Aunt Susan gave them. And then they put the holiday decor up, etc. Your home begins to look like a consignment store. Honestly, have you ever been into a consignment store or a place where you go to get uh, antique store? Is that what I'm thinking about? And there's so much to look at. You are overwhelmed and you know that there's not possibly any way unless you were in there every day for a week that you would see everything. That is what happens. What you need to realize is, you know, when you go to a hotel or a uh, showroom that has, uh, you know, they lay out the bedroom, so you're, they're selling the bedroom furniture like a furniture store. 
or even a model home. When you walk in those, you love it, right? Oh, I want my house to look like this. I have got to have this beautiful, it, it just looks so put together. Well, the thing that you need to realize when you go into those places going forward is look around. Look how minimally they actually are decorated. Look how very few things are on the shelves, how very few things are on the walls. What they do is they decorate with texture, large pieces, statement pieces, pieces that you're going to remember, where it's easy to look around the room, especially for a model home. When you look around the room, they really don't want you to see the furniture. They want you to see how much space there is, how much they have in the room, where it, but it doesn't look like it makes it small. Number four are too many plants. For some reason, in the aesthetic of minimalism, you see a lot of minimalists have a lot of plants. It's like they're minimalist on everything else, but there's a ton of green plants everywhere, whether they're hanging from the ceiling in a macrame basket, or there's all kinds of succulents all over their patio. It can get overwhelming. When you have too many plants, it looks cluttered. I'm going to tell you from personal experience. We got into having succulents more recently in the last couple of years, and my husband just wanted to continue to buy them, you know, going to the um, uh, to the Lowe's and getting the different cactuses and the succulents. And it all started out just me wanting an aloe plant for the time I get burned, which happens a lot on the oven and needing to put some aloe on, right? Well, the thing you don't think about with these plants, they grow. <laughs> yeah. They grow and they get bigger and then they need a bigger pot and then they grow so big that literally your aloe plants up to here and out to here and you have no room. So when you first had the collection of, you know, three cute little plants, a Christmas cactus and, you know, a, a, what do you call those things? The, the lily, you know what I'm talking about, and an aloe plant, they were so cute together. But now it looks like a hot mess. Well, recently I had to put a kibosh on this. Told my husband, no more plants, absolutely not. I had to go in and I actually harvested my aloe. We had one aloe plant that was, it was probably like this. So I harvested my aloe. What do you mean by that? So basically what I did was I cut the leaves off. I um, did, you have to take a clean knife, cut the leaves off, and then you take off the skin. You have to let, first you have to let them drain. There's like this yellow icky stuff that's in it that you don't want. Um, you can look this up on Pinterest, how to uh, harvest your aloe. But basically, that's what I did. I let them drain, and then I cut off the skin. And what it leaves you with, it's kind of gross, but it almost looks like a fish fillet. Um, and then I pulsed that in a blender, and I poured it in an ice cube tray, and I froze my aloe. So there are many uses for aloe, but basically what I've kept it for in the freezer is for when I get a burn. Just pull out an aloe cube is what I'll use it for. Number five kind of goes along with number three. Too much stuff on your walls. You know, all the pictures, the picture gallery, all the pictures of the family on the wall in the hallway. It goes back six generations and you still can't remember which, which aunt that is in the middle picture. Anybody ever experienced that? It's great to have these memories, it is. But really, do you need that many? Find the ones that really mean something to you. And maybe a couple times a year, switch out the photos in that photo frame. Or same thing with the wall decor. I mean, you know, the gallery wall thing, if it's nice and neat, it does look good. So if, if you've got it and you've got the exact same frames and it's, you know, the exact same, like a grid effect, yes. But uh, when you start putting an arrow pointed that way, a big clock in the middle, you know, Aunt Sally's picture here, Jonathan's graduation picture here, your diploma over here, again, that's not something you're going to see when you go into a model home or, you know, into a hotel. If that's something you love, hey, that's fine. Any of this stuff, if, it, if you love it, do it. I'm just saying, if you are wondering why your house looks cluttered, that might be the reason. The next is horizontal surfaces, specifically kitchen counters. Oh, the feeling of a clean kitchen counter I love. Nothing on it. We try to put away absolutely everything. If I had place to put my toaster oven and my knife block, I would. However, we do not at the moment. But 
when there are dishes in the sink, when there are dishes drying on the counter, when lunch ha dishes haven't been cleaned up or all of the dry good groceries haven't been put away. And the kitchen counter has now my daughter suckered that she didn't finish eating, her shoe somehow got up there and her jacket along with all this other stuff. When I walk in, especially if it looks like that when I walk in from work, it just this sinking feeling, right? But when I walk in and that kitchen counter is completely clean, there's nothing on it, ah, that is just a good feeling. And it doesn't look cluttered. It looks like a place to prep for me when I cook. I have to start off with a clean area. Now I will make it look like a disaster. Let my mom tell you. When I cook, it's like Tasmanian devil went through that kitchen and used every single dish there was, right? That is what I do. But I have to start out in a zen place with a clean kitchen countertop. And the last one are overstuffed shelves. When you have a bookcase or a built-in, you feel like you have to immediately go ahead and put stuff in it. So you go out and you randomly get weird items and you try to put it together, again, to look like a model home or some styled shelf at a furniture store. You don't need to do that. Take your time. When we decorated this huge entertainment center that we had built in our home, I was very mindful and it took me several months. But the majority of what is actually on this shelf are items that are antique, that are meaningful, that mean something to me. And what I did was I decorated with a few books here, a few pictures here, and then I kind of just went in between and added some things that were meaningful. There are vases that are from uh, my husband's grandmother. The books that I went out and got, I went out and purchased from a uh, secondhand book place. Um, took off the paper cover and chose colors that would kind of go. You don't have to fill up the entire thing, the entire shelf with books. Use some books here and then use pieces of varying sizes. Try to use what you already have. Try to get things that are meaningful, that you have a story to tell behind them rather than some just piece from a, a TJ Maxx or Marshalls like I mentioned before that doesn't mean anything and you're just putting it there to take up space. So that is the seven reasons your home may look cluttered. Give me your thoughts down below on these. Uh, do you think your home looks cluttered? Are you going to take some of these ideas and put them into place? I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you back for more videos. Mm -hmm.